Lord, we thank you for life. We thank you for freedom. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are in the land of the living this morning. Father, we just give you all the glory. We give you all the praises because it belongs to you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, this one we bring our country before you. We bring Trinidad and Tobago before you, Lord. All that the people are experiencing, Lord Jesus. All that is going on. Father, dear God, for those that may feel anxious inside, dear God. Those that may feel fearful. Those that are concerned, dear God. Even for those whose families, Lord Father, in quarantine, dear God. For persons who have succumbed. Lord Father, to the virus, we pray, Lord Jesus, that there would be no deaths in our nation, Lord. We pray for recovery. We pray for healing, Lord Jesus. We ask for mercy, dear God. Father, we as a nation have fallen away from you. Lord Father, where we mock at you, Lord Jesus, where we do not believe in God anymore. Father, where our lives have denied that God exists, we pray for a turning from our wickedness, a turning away from our sins, and a returning to you, Lord Jesus. We pray, O oh God, for mercy, dear God. I pray for our government. Continue to give them wisdom, Lord Jesus. Father, dear God, they have tough decisions to make to safeguard our people, to safeguard our land. We pray, Lord Father, that you give them wisdom, give them strength, dear God. We pray that the people, Lord God, we the people that take heed, Lord Jesus, and do our part as well. But ultimately, Lord Jesus, we know that our life, Lord Father, comes from you, Lord. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that life would be sustained, dear God. Father, that you have your way, Lord Jesus, even this morning, Lord God. Father, we pray for a special anointing, a moving of your spirit. As the saints gather, Lord Father, from their homes, for all the, the viewers, Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord, that they would have prepared themselves, Lord Jesus, to come before you this morning to join in the worship. Father, we know that the praise and the worship started since last night, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, this morning is just a time to give you glory and to lift you up. We pray for a special anointing, even as we pray and sing whatever we do, Lord Jesus. All to your honor, all to your glory. We pray that your word would go forth with power and with anointing. We pray, oh God, for encouragement of the people, Lord Jesus whose hearts are in fear, Lord Jesus. We pray, O oh God, for peace, Lord Jesus. Father, for those who are worrying and they are being overwhelmed by it, Lord Jesus, we pray, O oh God, that they will hold on to you, believe your word, believe your promises are true, Lord Jesus. Father, even when things seem out of control, you are always in control. Father, all of this you are working for good. And I pray that we believe your word, Lord Jesus. Listen to what you are saying to us, dear God. Take heed, Lord Jesus. Father, tonight just have, this morning, Lord, just have your way. Let your will be done, Father. May you be given all the honor, all the glory, and all the praises belongs to you.
begin to worship you, to lift up your name, O oh God, to give you praise and worship that you deserve. Thank you, God, for your precious blood. I plead that blood in my body, soul, and spirit. I ask you, O oh God, to cover our families with your blood. Cover our church family in the name of Jesus. Father, you said, if my people which are called by thy name shall humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven and you will lead our land. Father, we know, God, that you are in charge and you are in control in spite of everything that is happening, O oh God. Father, this morning I pray for your people everywhere, all over this country, all over this world. Lord, I pray as I cry out to you, God, as we humble ourselves this morning, God. I pray, Lord, that your spirit will move in a mighty way. Lord, as we remember your children are crying out in Egypt. Lord, as they cry out to you, O oh God, that you hear. Father, this morning I pray that you hear our prayer and hear our cry. Father, we take authority over every spirit that is not like you. We come against principalities and powers. We come against spiritual wickedness in high places. And Father, this morning we ask you, O oh God, to cover the four corners of our country, God. And I pray this morning for your children, Lord, that they will wake up, God. Father, I know, Lord, that you are speaking to us as the church to rise up and come back to that place. Come back to that first love in the name of Jesus. Father, this morning I pray for your man's servant as they bring forth your word, that you will give them a word for your people in this time, Father. I pray, God, that they will, Lord, speak what you want them to speak, oh God, this morning. And I pray that your people will listen, Father. That we will take heed to your word. I pray, God, for our children that is outside the fold. In this time, Lord, that your spirit will awaken their spirit, God. Father, Lord, that you would speak to them, God. Minister to them, Lord. Trouble their spirits in the name of Jesus, God. Set their body feel on fire. I pray, God, this morning that there will be a spiritual awakening all over this world, Father. We know, God, that you are coming for a church that is on fire. You are coming for a church that is spotless, Lord. You are coming for a holy church. And I pray, God, this morning that you help us, Father. I pray, God, this morning for the government, Lord, all over this world, Father. Those that are in charge and control, I pray that you protect them. The protective service, the nurses, the doctors, Lord, all those that are taking the authority, Father. I pray, God, that you cover them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the hospitals and where these people are. And I pray, God, that your people, Lord, everybody in Trinidad will take heed, to, Lord, to the warnings, Father. They will just do everything that we can do to stop this virus. But Lord, we know all in all that you are in charge. You are in control. I come against spread of fear. I come against spread of anxiety. I pray, God, for peace upon the minds of your people. For peace this morning in the name of Jesus. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the Comforter. Lord, we just give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name.
devotees themselves. And as the few are here this morning, dear God, let us bring you, dear God, I represent dear Lord Jesus. Let us bring you praise and worship, dear God. In the midst of dear God, all the calamities, dear God, and everything that has taken place, dear God. We still, dear Lord Jesus, know that you, dear God, are in charge, dear God, and you are in control. You have the final say, dear Lord Jesus. And even everything that is happening here and not just in our country but globally, dear God, it's only because you are allowing it, dear Lord Jesus. So we know, dear Lord Jesus, that in spite of it all, dear God, there is good to come out of this, dear God. So this morning we ask, dear Lord, that you continue, dear God, to grant us favor, dear God, and, and grace and mercy in these times, dear Lord Jesus. We pray, dear God, for our brothers and sisters, dear God, those who are in their homes at this time, dear Lord Jesus. Many wishing that they could be in your house this morning, not just here locally, but throughout, dear Lord Jesus. So we pray for them, dear God, that you would strengthen them, dear God, and that you would keep them, dear Lord Jesus. We pray, dear Lord Jesus, that you would continue to provide for our every need, dear Lord Jesus. We know, dear God, that this is very uh, turbulent time, dear Lord Jesus. Tropical water, uh, very choppy waters we are, we are going through this, this time, dear Lord Jesus. Many are on the bread line this morning, dear Lord Jesus, without, dear God, uh, a steady income, dear God, but we are trusting in you, dear Lord Jesus, for every need and every provision this morning, dear Lord Jesus. You have done it in the past, dear Lord Jesus, and you can do it again, dear God. And this morning we are standing on your word, we are standing on your promises, dear Lord Jesus. You said, dear Lord Jesus, that no plague, dear God, shall come near our dwelling, dear Lord Jesus, as believers and children of Christ this morning. And this morning we claim that promise, dear God, for ourselves, our brothers, our sisters, dear God, even dear Lord Jesus, for our family members who are outside the fold, dear God. We pray that this time that they would really search their hearts and would, oh Lord, realize, dear God, that it is only you, dear Lord Jesus, who can save, dear God, and who can keep us, dear God. And we pray, dear Lord Jesus, that this time, dear Lord, many would come back to you, dear God. Those who may have grown cold, dear God, and have been too busy, dear Lord Jesus. Maybe, oh Lord Jesus, this time, dear God, where everyone is just slowing down and taking it easy, dear God. We just pray, dear God, that this will, uh, will have allow them, dear God, to reflect on you and to reflect on your goodness, dear God. And may, oh Lord Jesus, the hands of men draw back to you, dear God. Reignite the fire, dear God, Jesus, the passion, the desire, dear God, in, the, in your people this morning to want to serve you and to want to live for you, dear God, not just um, during troubled times, dear God, but at all times, dear God, Jesus, and we just thank you for that, dear God. We pray for our government, dear God, as they have to make tough decisions, dear Lord Jesus, at this time, dear God. We pray, dear God, that we, oh Lord Jesus, as, as your people as well, dear God, but, oh Lord, comply, dear Lord Jesus, and we pray, dear God, Jesus, that um, everything that is set up done would be would be all for, for the good, dear Lord Jesus. We pray that you would guide them as they continue to make um, decisions, amen, laws, put things in place, dear God, to just seem to, um, to have control, dear God. But we know, dear God, that you are the one who is in, in charge, dear God, and you are the one, dear God, who is in total control, dear God. So this morning we ask you, dear Lord Jesus, to even guide them, dear God, and give them the wisdom and knowledge to deal with the situation, dear God. And we just pray, dear God, that you will continue to look over us and our country, dear God, and the world by extension, dear God. We pray, dear God, for believers throughout this morning, dear God, Jesus, that they, they will take the time, dear God, and tune in, dear Lord Jesus, to their hearts and to their God, and in their homes, dear God, Jesus, that they will give you the same praise, the same worship, dear God, the same reverence, dear God, as if they were in a physical building this morning, dear God. We, dear Lord Jesus, the believers are the church, dear Lord Jesus, and we are uh, 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 about, dear Lord Jesus, so many this morning, dear Lord Jesus, in their homes, dear God. So I just pray that the light of the believers will shine wherever they are this morning, dear Lord Jesus, and that they will take the time, dear God, to tap in, dear God, and to renew themselves, dear God, Jesus. We just thank you for all these things, and we come at this time into your hands, in Jesus' name we pray.
looking on this morning, we'd like to welcome you to our Sunday morning our worship service. So you can feel free to just join along this morning as we just sing and give God all the glory and all the honor and praise that He deserves.
life under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by thee, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the Most High thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen.
a poem and it's entitled, We'll Get Through This. Lord, our troubles are so great and we don't know what to do. The price of our iniquity is finally coming due. The world is crumbling all about. No safe place can be found. Right is wrong and wrong is right. The change is quite profound. Lord, we need your guiding light to lead us out of here. We'll focus on your word and prayer to take away our fear. Temptations of this dying world will rule out, we'll rule out and let go. Give our burdens all to you. Shed our worldly woe. That's how we'll get through this, Lord. Fixed on heaven above, assured of your protection and help and everlasting love. Amen.
wonderful job. God bless you. Uh, we want to bring greetings in the name of Jesus to all the saints. Um, you know, it's it's different for us today. Uh, we have suspended all our regular services and just trying to keep within the framework, the guidance and the instructions of, uh, of our government and seeking our best um, interest. But just missing everybody, just missing everybody. The auditorium is practically empty just for the small crew that we have to do these um, live uh, broadcasts on, on, on Facebook. Uh, so we encourage um, everybody to be tuned in to all our regular services. That's Sunday morning, Sunday evening, 6.30, and on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, maybe two if it is possible. Uh, you can invite somebody uh, to, to view uh, these live broadcasts on, on Facebook. So, so wherever people are in their homes, uh, wherever you know they can uh, join with us in the worship of Almighty God and also the sharing of God's, of God's Word. I uh, just also want you to know that um, you can call in. In fact, we would like you to do that right after I finish sharing the message. Uh, there will be an opportunity for you to call in, to text in, to WhatsApp uh, my number or somebody is manning the phone uh, this morning. And so you can, you can do that. Um, and even while I'm, while I'm sharing, you want to send a, a, a message, you can, you can do that. But we just want to pray with you. We want to pray with your family. And uh, uh, we are praying for, for our, our country. All right. So at this time, I want to share with you uh, a verse of scripture that God has laid upon uh, my heart. I shared a little, little bit uh, um, about it um, just uh, at the other service. And it's the book of Second Chronicles chapter 7 and this is uh, 14. The Lord laid upon my heart to share this particular verse. In fact, um, Majesta, all from the pulpit, uh, brought uh, have a tie on and it goes in line uh, with the with the message. I hope that you are getting it. And this tie says the power of prayer and it, it has a cross, it has a cross on it. And this is what uh, the verse is uh, uh, telling us today the verse of scripture. So, Second Chronicles chapter 7, and this is 14. And so, the word of God says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Uh, we have a lot of instructions given us today and it's all it's all for good uh, for for the most part uh, we are hearing from uh, the medical field uh, some things that we really need to, to do uh, doctors are, are giving us advice mm -hmm. uh, nurses are giving us advice uh, uh, the uh, ministers uh, in Parliament are giving us advice and giving us instructions. And so in this passage of scripture, God is also giving us some instructions. So I'm talking to you all today on following the doctor's orders. I know that we are very sharp, we are very keen uh, to follow what the doctor is saying because it says the doctor knows what is best. And so when you go to the doctor and uh, the doctor gives you some advice, you want to take it. The doctor gives you a prescription. You want to take it as, as follows. It is for your good. It is for your well-being. Well, God has given us to us uh, some instructions as well. And as you all know, the Bible says that, uh, that Jesus, uh, that he is indeed uh, the healer. He is indeed the great physician. He indeed is the doctor of all doctors. Uh, we would be wise not only to heed uh, the admonition and the instructions uh, of the doctors and the uh, people who are trying to help us at, at this time, uh, but most importantly to heed the instructions of the Lord. 
to heed God's instructions. So there are four things in this verse of scripture that I'll be sharing with you all. But first, let us just bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we can do a live broad, broadcast. And so the, the people, their Lord, our members, their Father, who are accustomed to coming, Lord, on Sunday morning for a time of, of worship, uh, they are not here. And they are their homes and uh, they are uh, have tuned in, Lord, to the broadcast. And maybe there are others as, as well. And Lord, we pray that as your word go forth, that hearts would be encouraged and, and blessed, dear Lord, and well instructed, dear Father, and that we will heed the instructions of, of the doctor of all doctors has given unto us, the great physician today. We continue, dear Lord God, to pray for our land. We continue to pray, dear Lord, for every citizen, for those, dear Lord Jesus, that are afflicted, dear God, we pray that healing would be given, speedy healing in Jesus' name. We pray, dear Lord God, too, that you will continue to protect our nation as a whole. And we do also pray that this plague will pass over us real quick in the name of the Lord. And dear Father, we thank you for accomplishing your will and your purposes and during this time and the message today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Following the doctor's uh, orders. Uh, and so the first thing I want to share with you all today coming from this passage of scripture is that we need to humble ourselves. If my people which are called by my name, the verse says number one, will humble themselves. Uh, as you all know, I just like to begin with a little bit of, of humor. And it is good. Laughter is like a medicine. The broken spirit dry the bones. And I know that we all could use a little laughter today. And so there was a young woman whose name was Sabi. And she met with her pastor to ask help. She had a problem. So the pastor said, Sabi, what is your problem? She said, well, pastor, I have a, a sin. It is a besetting sin. So pastor, she continued, I have become aware of this sin in my life of which I have no control. In fact, pastor, I want to confess that it, it's, a, it's a little pride because every time I'm at church, I begin to look around at the other women in church. And I realize something, pastor, that as I look around at all the other women in church, that I realize that I'm the prettiest one in the whole congregation. And none of the others can compare with my beauty. But pastor, I want to ask you a question. What could I do about this sin? And so the pastor replied, Savi, you know, it's, it's not a sin. It's just a horrible mistake. <laughs> well, <laughs> give me a chance. <laughs> give me a chance to... <laughs> To finish chocolate and to finish, finish laughing. But pride is something that can affect every one of us. And so, if you are good looking, well, God bless you so much. I want to say that um, that I have a, a good looking wife. In fact, the most good looking woman in the entire world. And God has given to us. Uh, three good-looking girls as as well and two sons so I have to watch out about that pride as well myself in, in fact too when I look at the mirror sometimes I say this is a good-looking boy <laughs> but we all we all struggle uh, with uh, the sin of pride if it is not that uh, uh, if it's not our look sometimes it's our possession we can be very proud of what we possess can be proud of our, our homes, and we can be proud of our cars, we can be proud of our, our clothing, our, our jewelry. Sometimes we can be too proud about our status in life, and it can really get to our heads. We can be proud of our achievements, we can be proud also of our successes. But we all need to humble ourselves, and that's what God is saying. Put away the pride, put away the pride. 
and humble ourselves and he promised in his word that he will forgive our sins and he promised that he would bring healing to our land and as you all know today more than anything else what we want in our country what we want in our cities what we want in the villages is that we want to see god's healing come upon us we want to see healing in the region as well as the entire world today but not only the members of the congregation have problems uh, when it comes to pride but even pastors too have to watch out uh, with pride and so there is uh, another story that you might find a little bit humorous at the same time but uh, one christmas afternoon a pastor's wife dropped into her chair and said to her husband boy am i ever tired well her husband looked at her and said let me tell you something sweetheart i have been on my feet for almost two days and you are talking about how tired you are i want you to know sweetheart that i have led two special services last night and three i did today so i have preached a total of five sermons so how come you are complaining that you are so tired and so the wife replied to her husband preacher there is I've had to listen to them all and so preachers has to be careful I guess that that would have burst his bubble a little, a little bit sometimes we can be proud that of our congregation perhaps how big our churches are we can be proud of perhaps how many people are listening to our sermons and uh, how much uh, likes we get and and all of that so pride uh, could, could come into anybody's heart and what God is saying listen we got to humble ourselves um, you know it sounds very courageous to stand up in a crisis and say we can defeat this we can overcome we can overcome this uh, I know some people are, are saying this uh, right now but folks when we are saying this I want to encourage you to do it with the same mindset uh, of Joshua and Caleb. You all know the scenario of Kadesh Banya. The Bible tells us that as the spies were sent into the land of Canaan to spy on the land that God had given and, and promised to give unto to Israel, that 10 of them came back with a bad report and said, we are not able to possess this land because we went in there. Certainly the land is a land full of milk and honey. And they brought back a huge bunch of grapes. It was so big that two men had to carry it on a, on a pole. And they, they gave a report of, of the land about how good the land was. But they said, we can't, we can't at all um, uh, conquer this land because there are giants in the land. They have chariots of iron and fortified sea. But Joshua and Caleb still the, the people and said to the people, listen. We can take the land and we can possess the land um, because the Lord is uh, with us. Um. And so it is preceded by, if the Lord delights in us, uh, Joshua say, uh, said, if the Lord finds favor in us, uh, he will bring us into the land and give us the land. And so folks, uh, it is important, uh, even though we are saying to one another, we are going to make it, we are going to get through it. Uh, but we are only going to get through it uh, if the Lord delights in us. Uh, if the Lord finds favor in us, uh, we are going to get through this if we humble ourselves. Uh, the scripture tells us uh, we are going to get through it. Uh, so whatever is our boast uh, make sure that we are not boasting in ourselves and what we can do what we can accomplish uh, but make sure that our boast uh, is always in uh, the lord and of uh, the lord uh, we are reminded uh, and i spoke of this last time we are reminded of the influenza the pandemic that struck in 1918 and what that did a, a century ago is that it struck a, a blow to the pride of the people during that time because during that time a century ago there were major discussions 
discoveries uh, that took place. Um, in fact, uh, there was so much of scientific achievements uh, in the field of med medicine that people felt that they were invincible. Researchers during that time had developed vaccines for many diseases such as smallpox and anthrax and rabies and diphtheria, meningitis. And so there were great advances in microbiology that led to the thought that we are invincible. Nothing at all would be able to shake us. But it was in that particular context that something hit the world by surprise in which they were ill-equipped to handle it. You see, folks, there was a death blow that came to the pride of the people. They were boasting in what they have accomplished. But just uh, influenza, the Spanish influenza, just that in itself um, struck and 50 million persons perish. 50 million persons. Uh, it is said that is one of the greatest pandemic in the history of humanity. And look what has happened, folks. Uh, to date, one century later, we are in 2020. This pandemic started in 2019. So just one century later, look what has happened to us. I ask myself this question, are we not learning as a nation? Are we not learning as a people? Are, are we not learning as a global society? Have, are, are we any better than the people of 1918, 19? Uh, 19. Are, are, are we, are we, are we uh, not the same, have the same mentality that we have become so proud and self-sufficient folks? Uh, are we not learning from the mistakes of, of others? Uh, instead of being uh, prideful of, of our accomplishments, uh, we always need to humble ourselves uh, and realize that it is God uh, that gives us the power. The Bible tells us it is He that gives the power so that we can gain wealth, um, that we can achieve things um, and we can do things it is God and we must never forget it. We must never take glory for ourselves. Um, there's a wonderful hymn that we sing, to God be the glory, great things he has done. And that indeed should always be our motto, to give God the praise and to give God the, the, the glory. So folks, uh, we are encouraged, uh, number one, uh, to humble ourselves. Uh, you all can remember in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20, what happened um, to Judah. The Bible tells us that there were three nations uh, that came against Judah. And so Judah was in a state of panic. King Hezekiah looked uh, at uh, his army and realized that his army was no match. Uh, uh, for the enemy. He looked at his supplies and realized it would not be sufficient. Uh, he looked uh, at his weaponry and realized that uh, it was not sufficient. Uh, and so you can imagine the pandemonium just like we are facing here today. How scary it was for Judah to realize that um, all of a sudden that they could be completely destroyed or taken into captivity and become slaves. Um, and so everybody was worrying about what is going to happen unto us. But the Bible tells us that King Jehoshaphat, instead of being in a state of, of panic, instead of being in, 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 governed by fear, the Bible tells us he set out his heart to seek the Lord. That's what he did. What, he, what, what Hezekiah did, in other words, is that he humbled himself before God. Then. And he declared to the nation, listen, let us now seek God. Let us pray. Let us repent of our sins. And let us humble ourselves and trust in God. And we are at the mercies of God. And I want you to know that Judah, the Bible tells us, the entire nation, everybody came together. Men and women, boys and girls, everybody came together. Even the king himself, the Bible tells us, humbled himself. You know, recently I was 
looking at a, a, a video clip um, of, um, of a, a prime minister. We are talking about the president uh, of a, a country. And that, that president um, led in prayer for his nation. And that president humbled himself. Uh, that president repented on behalf of the entire nation. And I said, God, uh, this uh, is so wonderful. If all the presidents and all the kings and, and all those that are in authority, if we were to do the same thing, if we would all humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways and seek the face of God, uh, folks, uh, the Bible says that God will care from heaven. What God desires most of all from uh, above everything else uh, is that during this time is that we will turn to God uh, and that we will humble ourselves and prostrate ourselves uh, and realize that God um, you have the power and you have the control and you have the might uh, over every everything and you can bring this to an abrupt end and so this is what Hezekiah did. Even he himself uh, put on sackcloth and was an ashes, a sign of humility, a sign of repentance. Uh, and God worked marvelously after Judah humbled herself and after Hezekiah humbled himself. Uh, God worked so mightily. There was a great, great, great deliverance uh, that took place uh, and the nation uh, was saved. Uh, but folks, I want to warn them. Uh, about people who consistently harden their hearts against God. You know, I've been thinking um, about what uh, has been happening lately because as you realize um, that in the, the last decade or so, in the last few years or so, there have been um, uh, waves and waves uh, of natural disasters and, and pandemics upon the planet Earth. Many things have been taking place one after another. I wonder if God uh, is uh, sending us a warning. I wonder if God is speaking to the planet Earth um, through all that is happening that God is wanting to get the attention of uh, the people of planet Earth uh, that, that I will not be taken for granted. Uh, God is saying, listen, uh, I, 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 I want you to repent of your sin. Sin always has a price. The Bible says uh, in the book of Romans chapter 6 and verses 23, the wages of sin uh, is death, uh, folks. Uh, a sin will always bring judgment. And I wonder if God is not speaking to planet Earth um, and letting the people know, listen, it's time that we turn from our sins um, and turn to God uh, and God will have mercy. We have to learn, folks, uh, from history. We have to learn from the mistake of others uh, when it comes to our pride. You all can remember when God sent Moses down to Egypt to stand before Pharaoh and to, to, to tell Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let God's people go. You have oppressed them for too long. 430 years um, they were oppressed in Egypt and they were made slaves and, 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 and Moses came and said to, to Pharaoh, listen, God says it's time to let the people go. It's time that the oppression stop. It's time that the the uh, justices stop. It's time that that you the people be released. And so Pharaoh's heart was so hardened. He said that he will not let the people of God go. And so God brought about plagues upon Egypt. God brought upon ten plagues on Egypt. And after every plague, Moses uh, uh, that, that came by the hand of Moses, Pharaoh had an opportunity to repent after every plague. The first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. Pharaoh had the opportunity again and again and again. Ten times Pharaoh had an opportunity to repent. But the Bible tells us that this man continued to harden and to harden and to harden his heart. That is why the plagues continued. You see, the plagues continued because Pharaoh was hardening his heart. If Pharaoh had repented after the first plague, 
Then, uh, then it would have stopped. If we had repented after the second, uh, then there was no more need of sending all those plagues. But the more Pharaoh hardened his heart, is the more the plagues came upon Egypt. And I feel, folks, that what is happening today, because you're having waves and waves of pandemic and whatnot, is because what is happening is that uh, people still uh, are not getting it. Getting it. People, we are still not learning, folks. We continue to live as there is no God. Some even go so far to say that God does not exist at all. We continue in our sinful ways. We continue in our evil ways. With the murders continue to increase. The robberies continue to increase. The sin is continuing to increase. We are not learning. We're not changing and so perhaps um, God is wanting to get the attention of our country and the nations of the world today that we need to change our ways we need to change our attitude uh, we need to humble ourselves before the Lord um, and we need to turn to the Lord I want us also to be reminded uh, of the, one of the greatest kings uh, of the Old Testament, uh, a super world power as it were, King Nebuchadnezzar, as he went about conquering many lands. Uh, and the Bible tells us uh, that after many, many victories, uh, one day that uh, he was uh, walking uh, in his palace uh, and he was looking uh, at all uh, that he had accomplished uh, and the, 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 the buildings that he built uh, and, and the, the, all that he had in his treasuries uh, and the glory of it uh, he, he looked at it uh, and he said uh, wow I am such a great man I'm such a powerful man Look, I am a conquered nation, and look how much treasures that I have. Look at the palaces that I have built, and, and all, all of that. And he was just priding himself. But folks, God had given him a warning. The Bible says the date, it was one year that the king said that. Because uh, the Bible tells us, that God had given him a dream a year before, a vision before about himself. And in that vision, he was encouraged by Daniel, King, listen, what you need to do is to just humble yourself and to realize that there is a God, the true and the living God. He created the heavens and he created the earth and worship must be ascribed to him only. But the king, did he receive that admonition? Did he receive that warning? Although God warned him a year before, warned him a year before what would be his fate. Yet King Nebuchadnezzar forgot all about that. Just in 12 months time, he forgot about the warning. He did not learn at all. And so judgment came 12 months after to King Nebuchadnezzar. Judgment came. He was driven from his throne. For seven years, the Bible tells us, he ate grass like, a, like an ox. And he was out in the fields. Until one day after the end of seven years, he learned his lesson. And he humbled himself, the Bible tells us. And gave God the glory. The God who made the heavens and the earth. And he worshipped the Lord. And because King Nebuchadnezzar repented, because he turned from his sin, because he changed his attitude about God, he was restored. He was healed and restored back to his kingdom. And this is what God has promised in his word. Just as Nebuchadnezzar repented of his sin and just as he turned from his wicked ways, God, brothers and sisters, healed him and restored him. God promised that he will do the same to our country and he will do the same to this world. If we will humble ourselves, uh, folks, uh, and we will seek the face of the Lord and we will turn uh, from our wicked ways, uh, God says uh, he will hear from heaven, he will forgive uh, our sins, uh, and he will bring healing, praise God. Uh, I am convinced, folks, uh, that God wants to do it. Uh, God does not hate us. Uh, do not think you might say that God is such a hater. How could God then 
be doing these things. But folks, God is not doing these things or allowing these things as it were. All right, because he hates us, but because he loves us. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3 9 that God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. You see, folks, uh, greater than physical death, much greater than physical death is an eternal death. And what God is more concerned about, because the fact about it is, is that we will all die. We will all die. Sooner or later, we will all die. If it is not by a plague, folks, it might be by something else. Or simply, it might be by old age. But we are all going to die. So that is not the main thing. The main thing after you die, what is going to happen? That is the main thing. And that is what God's primary concern is about. God's primary concern is where you and I are going to spend eternity. So God is, a, a, God is allowing things to happen, folks, to, to give us a warning about eternity. And so that is what God's greatest concern. So when things are happening, it's not that God has is hating us so, but he loves us so much. And if, if it will take folks a plague, if it will take an earthquake, if it will take something so that we can be brought to our senses and that we can repent, folks, because God does not want to see us die and go to an eternal hell, which is real. He wants to save us somebody. I am praying that through it all, that people will repent and turn from their sins. And if this is accomplished, it is worth it all to God be the glory. To God be the glory. So in closing, today I want to ask you, why don't you, right where you are, in your homes, wherever you are viewing this live broadcast, why don't you just humble yourself, get your family together, and, and let's humble ourselves, and, Let's look within us. What sin is there that we need to confess? What is there that we need God to, to forgive? If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, today I encourage you to accept Him and to receive the gift of eternal life. Praise God. If you are a backslider and you have turned away from God, Today is a good day for you to repent and turn back to God. Do not be like Pharaoh. Don't keep happening and happening and happening and happening in your heart until total destruction and annihilation came. No, humble yourself right now. Humble yourself. Just before I pray, remember if you want to call in for prayer, you can do so after I lead in this prayer today. If you want to text or WhatsApp, you can do so. Or even after the, the live broadcast, uh, feel free and uh, call me. And uh, let me know how we can pray for you and, and uh, how we can help you um, otherwise. Uh, all right? So, I'm going to bow with you in prayer. For those of you wanting to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, would you say this prayer right now? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace and I thank you for your love for me in that you sent Jesus 2,000 years ago to die on the tree for my sin and the sin of the whole world. And I know that I'm a sinner and I am unable to save myself. I cannot get to heaven by my own good works by my own righteousness because my the best of my righteousness is still a filthy rag in your sight I can only get to heaven through the shed blood of Jesus because it's the blood that washes away sin and I repent of my sin and ask forgiveness and I now receive Jesus as my saviour and I will serve him now and forever. Thank you, Father, for hearing that prayer. My prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Praise God. If you are a backslider today, you can say this prayer. Heavenly Father, I repent of my disobedience, lack of faith, and I rededicate my life to you. And for the rest of the days and the time that I have upon planet Earth, I'm going to live it for you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. At this point in time, we just before I have a general prayer, we have a prayer request that has uh, come in to us here uh, for two of our members that needs uh, needs prayer for Nick and Kavita, and so we're gonna I'm gonna pray for them right now. Heavenly Father, we lift up our brother and, and sister. You know the pain that they are in. You know their Lord Jesus. Are the disturbances, dear Lord. You know their concerns. You know their needs, dear Lord Jesus. And Father, we thank you, dear Lord God, that, that Lord, you stand with them and by them today. You will never abandon them. You will never leave them. You will never forsake them. Give them strength for this hour. Give them peace for this hour. Give them constant protection as your word says that the angels of the Lord encamp and run about them that fear him. And I pray, dear Lord, that you continue to keep them safe, dear Lord, from this virus, dear Lord. Draw a bloodline around them, dear Father. The virus will not touch them, not even come near them. In Jesus' name, thank you for supplying their needs. Amen and amen. Praise God. We are going to pray for our nation. We are going to pray for our government. We are going to pray for the doctors and the nurses. And we want to say that we really appreciate them. Those that are putting themselves out there, putting themselves in harm's way, as it were, to save lives. God bless you. We know the great work that, that you are doing. So we are going to pray for our nation. Would you just bow with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we know that our nation is broken. Our nation is hurting. We are crossroads in our nation. A lot of uncertainty, dear Lord, is filling the air. Lord, there is fear all over, a lot of anxieties, dear Father, people are uh, having uh, uh, emotional uh, problems, dear Lord God, not knowing how to deal with all that is happening, dear Father God. And Lord, we pray that your peace would come upon every heart, dear Lord. You said that we should not be anxious in Philippians chapter 4. Don't be anxious, don't be worried about nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God with fast all understanding will keep your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. We pray, dear Lord God, for those, Lord, medical people, doctors and nurses, physicians, dear Lord God, that are putting themselves, dear Lord Jesus, even in danger to help those and to care for those, dear Lord, that are, are sick at this time. May you protect them and keep them safe, dear Lord Jesus. We pray for those, dear Lord, that uh, have the virus, dear Father. Lord, that no one will die. Everyone will live and they'll recover. This is our prayer, dear Father. We put them into your hands, dear Lord. We pray, dear Lord, for further protection of all our citizens, dear Father, in Jesus' name. Protect the people, dear Lord. Not just, Lord, the common man, but even those, dear Lord Jesus, that uh, are up there, Lord. Those, dear Lord Jesus, that are... Uh, Constantly, dear Lord, having to be in contact, dear Lord, with others, the, the police, dear Lord Jesus, the ambulances, dear Lord God, uh, and the politicians, dear Lord, we pray for everyone, no one will be left out, uh, dear Father, even the beggar, dear Lord Jesus, that you would protect each one and keep us safe. Our eyes are upon you today, dear Father God. Pray a special prayer for our members again, dear Lord, of power and sight, may you supply the needs of the difficult time. But no one, dear Lord Jesus, would be without their Lord God. We pray, dear Lord, for those, dear Father, that have other issues going, going on. We pray, dear Lord, that you would minister to them, dear Lord Jesus, and keep us up. Dear Father, we know, Lord, that we are living in the last days. It can be any, any time now that Jesus may come. Thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity, dear Lord Jesus, to do this live broadcast, dear Lord. And as we seek to continue to do this, may you use it as a, a medium to, to minister and to be a blessing, dear Lord Jesus, to all our members and everyone else that would be tuning in, dear Father. Be with us today, dear Lord Jesus. 
as we uh, go about today and even as tonight there will be 6 13 there will be another live broadcast the lord may continue to be a blessing in jesus name amen by way of announcements i just again want to be i iterate that our plan is is that we will continue to do these uh these live broadcast at, at our regular service time so next week sunday morning again eight o'clock we'll be doing this sunday evening this evening 6 30 we do this so i want to encourage you uh to you know to tune into these live broadcasts on wednesday uh we'll be doing our live broadcast as well again all our services all our services are suspended regular services we have no regular services uh, at the church all of that is suspended in keeping with the laws of our land all we have here it's just the, the few people within the, the 10 allowance so that we can do the broadcast. We want you to know that. Some of you might be asking, well, Pastor, uh, we want to still continue to support the ministry fi financially. And so we want to thank you for thinking about that. You may say, how can we do that? Well, as you all, uh, 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 I want to just encourage you. What you can do is to come at my home office and you can you can drop off your contribution at the at my home office all right or just uh, let me know and we will make arrangements of of that and so god bless you so very much may god continue to protect us and to continue to keep us safe all right well good morning everybody and tune in later god bless you